Hey, this is John. Had an amazing time this morning uh, uh, being interviewed on uh, Christian television. It's going to be broadcast here in Detroit first and then uh, nationally coming up. I'll let you know when it is. But it was an hour long and talked a lot about uh, the prophetic. Uh, but one of the things I talked about was my dream of being dragged toward hell and my book, The Terror of Hell. And there's something that I'm radically concerned about. I was talking to uh, the uh, uh, the host a little bit just a while ago about this, and and uh, I'm, I'm I'm crazy concerned about the false grace message message that's out there. There's a lot of people that are that are uh, that are at risk of hell based on false information. And there's a true grace message, uh, and there's a false grace message. And I, I'm not going to spend a lot of time right here with that, but my book, The Terror of Hell, I'm in the process of revising it right now, and I'm going to be getting that out uh, as soon as I can. I'm going to be teaching on it this Saturday at the lab. You can audit the class for $15, and just go to revivallab.com for more information, but, um, you know, there's an excellent picture of what I'm talking about is the rich young ruler, where I believe there's a lot of rich young rulers in churches today where pastors or people are telling them that, yes, you said a prayer, you want to follow Jesus, and so now, bingo, you're saved, going to heaven, everything's cool, when when the reality is oftentimes it's just not the case at all, and and the call, the call to salvation is a call to radical surrender, it's a call to deep intimacy, and, um, you know, in my dream... When I, when, when I asked God for clarity, he said, John, there will be many people in the church that will be shocked to find themselves in hell one day. And, and again, it's all about our intimate connection with God. And he's, you know, the idea is, is one day that he'll say, depart from me, I never knew you, to some people. And the idea is, is, is depart from me, I was never intimate with you. And, you know, so it's a call to it's a call to surrender. It's a call to intimacy. It's a call to the cross. Where's preaching on the cross nowadays? Where's you know where do you hear about the reality of hell nowadays? And again, there's a true grace message, but the true grace message empowers us for holy living, empowers us to conquer the world, to advance the kingdom, to take dominion, these kinds of things. The false grace message would cause us to uh, you know to kind of to sleep our way through lives, <laughs> to sleep our way through our lives, and. And it's, yeah, there, we, this is a, a topic that simply has to be discussed. Um, you know, the, that the, the false grace or the hyper grace message would tell you that you don't really have to do anything because Jesus did everything. Well, Jesus did everything that needed to be done in order for us to have the option of getting saved. Okay? Uh, we, he did what he needed to do so we would have that ability. So we just had the option. But now it's on us. Now we have to step into that. And, you know, Jesus knew that the rich young ruler's heart wasn't surrendered. So he told him, it's like, listen, buddy, you know, it's not going to work. And no, you can't follow me. And I think we need preachers nowadays that have the guts to tell people that, that uh, you know, no, probably, you're probably not ready, you know, to follow Jesus. And uh, this is kind of what a lifestyle living for God looks like. And a lifestyle looking or living for God doesn't mean that we're perfect but it, but it, but it does mean a lot more than that we just hang up hang back and and do nothing you know and, and God is calling us to holiness he is calling us to to burn night and day in, in the fire of God you know he's calling us to 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 accomplish our ministry he's calling us to be be daily uh, deliberate intentional you know with the things that he's given us um, yeah you know I hope this is coming across and and this is it's a it's a massive issue big 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 issue. And I'm, I'm praying for more, more, uh, just revelation on how God would have me handle this. You know, I've been wrecked for 20 years since I had that dream and, um, boy, you know, we have, we have churches now that, that don't have power, don't have, don't have the fire, the life of God, you know, and, and why, you know, why is that? Well, it's very, very probably because we, we don't have that, that radical commitment and that, that going after the, you know, the heart of God and, and exploding in power and, and living that kind of a lifestyle. And, you know, and I'll tell you, I'll, I'll be honest, you know, delivering a message like this can, can sound, uh, you know, quite elitist, you know, it might come across as, you know, I'm saved and maybe you're not. And, you know, I, I <laughs> number one, you know, great, the greater your, your humility, uh, the, the greater your boldness will be, you know, and there's too much false humility out there that keeps these messages um, undercover. And you know, I'm the first to admit that I'm I'm, I'm weak. I'm a human. I'm 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 I'm, I'm a failed man. 
des- desperately, you know, in need of a savior. But but I'm not going to stop there. You know, I'm not I'm not going to I'm not going to water down the gospel and just pretend that we're all supposed to be shallow, weak, and uh, 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 you know, without any burning in us at all. And so we just we need we need to get this message out there. You know, read uh, "Why Revival Terries" by Leonard Ravenhill. You know, that'll rock your boat. And uh, there's there's other things. I just think this 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 old style preaching, you know, at least some of it needs to come back. And those of you that know me, you know that I totally embrace a true grace message. I'm all about the fact that, that we are, we are ambassadors. We are authorities. We are seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. We, you know, we don't have to beg God for things. We don't have to, we don't have to prove ourselves, you know, in order to be, to be, uh, approved for ministry. We don't have to 